Welcome to Casual Clicksons Hero Clicks Team Building Template Part 3 of 4. Next category here, we're going to look at reduced weaknesses. This category here is meant to add another combo or strategy or compensate for either close combat or ranged combat deficiencies in your team build. And these are some examples. Human Torch here can give friendly characters with a Fantastic Four keyword enhancement. This works to shore up a uh, weakness that this team has, which is it's lacking some ranged damage. Franklin Von Doom only does one damage, but with that enhancement boost, you know, he can consistently get plus three damage boosts from a uh, from enhancement with Human Torch, Blackbeard, and another character giving him that boost. Maybe someone like Franklin over here, um, who's also has potential to enhance the combo by making them uncounterable. You can go the more melee heavy route and add in another bruiser to really put the pressure on an opponent. And even though I don't want to say that these categories are in some are in a particular order, they are in some particular order. This is the order that I would recommend them to for you to start building your team around. So for example, uh, from the beginning, if I started with my core figures here and I wanted to build with Franklin Richards in mind, now I'm going to add him to the team here because Franklin has range, which my team kind of lacks anyway. My biggest damage dealer for the most part is Blackbeard until we can get Franklin Von Doom triggered. Now, if I want to choose Franklin here, I may reconsider then now seeing as how I have a decent range attacker, I may reconsider adding this Human Torch and instead maybe add uh, Wolverine for Flurry. So that way Blackbeard, Franklin Von Doom, and of course Wolverine are shredding things with this flurry. And even to a point, Franklin Von Doom here, uh, you would definitely want to see him using flurry on his five and four damage clicks. And so again, this is all just dependent on from where you start. Uh, you have your core characters. Move on to enhancing your combo. As you're moving along, keep in mind the weaknesses that are building up. Are you heavy in close combat? Are you heavy in range combat? and need to shore up and add some more bruisers. Uh, ask yourself those questions when you get to this category and try to reduce those weaknesses. The last category here for team building are supplements. Here are some sample supplements that I would consider adding to a team like this. I'll go over the objects last. Villain Wu here have the dolphin speed symbol. So that means that they will get the bonuses from Blackbeard here. Uh, if they're in water terrain, which means that if I, again, going back to the combo, if I'm going to work with seafarers, then of course I would start here, enhance my combo with Invisible Woman. Moving further over here to supplements, I can start adding Villain Wu. And, you know, take it from there. How many points is that? How many points am I trying to get to? Some of these objects, you know, I left them for the end because it's possible that sometimes, uh, let's say as I'm team building, and I would want to equip a special object on some someone like the thing here who uh, can have more potential with alchemical potion, granting him flurry, being able to get more attacks off. As long as you have your core figures, you decide what pieces do you want to add? What are you building towards to anyway? Which uh, is actually a good segue for the last portion here of the Casual Clicks and Hero Clicks team building template is other considerations. How much are you willing to spend your budget? And what format are you going to play? Is it golden, silver, modern? Because of course that means that you have more or less access to certain figures. And depending on your budget and depending on how far back you are willing to dig uh, to be able to play your teams. And so let's look at putting the finishing touches on team building here. First, let's look over how some figures can overlap in between categories or among categories and other figures, how they're kind of limited to a particular category on their own. Uh, we'll start with that, actually, because I, to, to me, that's actually a little more confusing. And I'm going to use Valeria Richards because I think she's the perfect example of a figure who kind of wants to pretend to be an actual support figure and instead of being a supplement. Remember, like I said, that support figures need to offer more than just give you perplex. So while Valeria here does give you perplex, and she also has a fantastic 14 ability, which, hey, can heal someone if she happens to get KO'd or vice versa. But 
it, it you know comparing her to someone like reed richards fixer of universes or black leopard she she's not quite there in power in terms of power so she is purely a supplemental figure rather than a support figure because she doesn't really offer too much outside of her perplex and somewhat of a heel with that fantastic four team ability and it doesn't mean that every character needs to be pigeonholed into one specific category. Some characters like him are actually very versatile and can go into many categories. Next, your meta and logo scene and why characters like Invisible Woman are so valuable. And Invisible Woman here actually brings another point to mind in never go all in with any strategy because as much as you would like to believe that the team that you've made, the strategy you've developed is the best there is. It's also very possible that someone else has figured out that combination and is probably a better player than you. So never go all in and these characters like Invisible Woman or the Doctor Doom figures that came out in the Future Foundation set are so valuable, especially in a meta scene because they let you adapt before the game has even started. So if you see that your opponent has a particular figure or a strategy that is just going to wreck you, characters like this kind of give you like a silver bullet. They give you an option and out, if you will. So you always want to take characters like Invisible Woman or Doctor Doom or anyone that has similar abilities into consideration. Another thing that I feel may have gotten overlooked is point values. That is actually something that's considered into the meta and local scene because typically when you're building your team, you're building your team to play in your local groups or venue. And just thinking about this brings so many more questions to mind such as point values. And typically in lower point games, you want to use the lower point values. That way you get more wiggle room to add more characters to your team, which of course then leads to more actions, more attacks. Cost and consideration can vary, especially if you're playing competitively or casually. That's two different extremes right there, because if you're playing casually, usually you want to have a conversation with your opponent and see, engage, and what restrictions they may have when it comes to team building. Whereas if you're playing competitively, you have to be willing to spend extra money to buy the figures that have the powerful abilities so that way you're able to compete as well. And finally, I'll leave you with some pieces of advice regarding the format because this is probably one of the more important decisions when it comes to team building. Figure out what format you want to build for because it wouldn't make sense for you to buy older figures if your local venue or playgroup doesn't even allow them or play them. And finally, playtest. This is just coming from personal experience and according to a 2014 scientific journal from Rice University, researchers conclude that while practice will not make perfect for all people, it will make almost everyone better. And I can definitely vouch for that. The more you playtest, the better. If you don't have anyone to playtest, try out the solo play here at Clicks Rules available on my YouTube channel. And another piece of advice is, of course, subscribe to not only my Heroclix YouTube channel, but any other Heroclix YouTube channels that you see. You never know what you'll learn from other players. So this was part three of four in Casual Clicks and Heroclix team building template. Remember to like and subscribe. That way you're notified when the next Casual Clicks Tactics video goes live. Don't forget, if your rows are not falling your way, at least try to win fellowship. Thanks for watching.